In this video, we'll provide the solution to question number 13 for practice exam number two for math 1210, in which case we're asked to find the derivative of the function f of x equals one over the square root of x using the definition of the derivative. It's very important here you recognize the instructions say the definition of the derivative. Uh, later on in a calculus course, it's typical to use to learn um, techniques such as the power rule uh, or the quotient rule, which might make this a little bit easier to compute. Absolutely. But to get full credit, to get any credit, honestly, we have to follow the instructions given here. We have to provide the, the calculation by the definition. So what that means is to compute f prime of x right here, we take the limit of the difference quotient. Take the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. If we're not taking the limit of a difference quotient, we won't get any credit on this one because we didn't follow the instructions. Now, if we apply f of x plus h to this specific question, taking the limit as h approaches zero here, we're going to get one over the square root of x plus h minus, then we get f of x, which is one over the square root of x, and then this will all sit above an h right here. So this function has a couple of issues going on with it. It has both rational functions and uh, square roots. We're going to have to treat them separately. So let's first deal with the fact we have fractions inside of fractions. We have this uh, nested fraction. So identifying the denominators of the baby's fractions, we're going to times the mother fraction by their least common multiple. So we're going to multiply the square root of x times the square root of h, but we have to do it to the top and bottom of the big fraction uh, so that it remains proportional. Don't bother distributing uh, that is multiplying the, the square root of x with the square root of x plus h. Leave things factored. It's perfectly fine to leave things factored. In the numerator, you would distribute these things through, in which case we then get the limit as h approaches zero. You're going to get the square root of x times the square root of x plus h all over the square root of x plus h. Uh, you're gonna get minus the square root of x uh, times the square root of x plus h over the square root of x. And in the denominator, we now get h times the square root of x times the square root of x plus h. Do not multiply out a denominator. It will not be to your benefit to do so. It's, it's not gonna help you, so don't do it. Now, the reason we multiply by the by the, fr the blue fraction above is that you'll now notice there's some simplification of fractions. The square root of x plus h cancels here. And then on the second one, the square root of x will cancel out right here. So if we write this in simplified form to see where we are, we take the limit as h goes to zero. We're gonna get the square root of x minus the square root of x plus h all over h times the square root of x times the square root of x plus h. Leave the denominator factored. It's better to do so. Um, also, don't be tempted by, oh, there's a square root of x and a square root of x right here. We can't cancel out the square root of x because there's not a common factor across the top and bottom. While the denominator is divisible by the square root of x, the numerator is not because not everything in the numerator is divisible by the square root of x. Same thing could be said about the square root of x plus h right there. So in order to proceed from here, since we have a square root of x and a square root of x plus h in the numerator, my advice is to rationalize the numerator. So we're going to multiply again by a strategic number one. This time we're going to multiply by the square root of x plus the square root of x plus h. Make sure we do it to the denominator as well so that the fraction stays proportional to its original form. All right. When we do that, we're going to foil out the numerator. In which case, you're going to get the square root of x and the square root of x. It's the first one. Then you're going to get plus the square root of x times the square root of x plus h. In the next one, you're going to have minus the square root of x plus h times the square root of x. And then lastly, you're going to get a minus the square root of x plus h squared. And this all sits above. Now we have h, square root of x, square root of x plus h. And then you have the square root of x plus the square root of x plus h. Despite any temptations to do so, do not multiply out the denominator. Simplify the numerator. That's what our goal is right now. So some things to note. We have the square root of x times square root of x plus h. We have the square root of x plus h times square root of x. The order of multiplication doesn't matter. One is positive. One is negative. So these guys are going to cancel each other out. So they're gone. That's why we multiplied by the conjugate in the first place. If you take the square root of x squared, that'll just become an x. If you take the square root of x plus h squared, that'll just become an x plus h. Do pay attention to the signs though. You're going to get x minus x plus h all over this massive denominator, right? There's a lot going on here. Taking the limit as h goes to zero right here. So see what happens is this negative sign would, would distribute, right? And then you have an x minus x, so they cancel out. In which case, then we're at the moment, we're going to get the limit as h goes to zero. I'm going to write the denominator first because it's so huge. I want to make sure the fraction bar is big enough for it. 
h times the square root of h x times the square root of x plus h times the square root of x plus the square root of x plus h. In the denominator, we now just have a negative h. Whew, took a lot of effort there. Now we can do it. Now we have a multiple of h on top and a multiple of h on the bottom. We can cancel those things out. Our limit then became the limit as h approaches 0. Again, I'm going to multiply or write out the denominator, not multiply it out. We get the square root of x. We get the square root of x plus h. We're going to get the square root of x plus the square root of x plus h. And this is all under negative 1. Now you'll notice that although there are h's in the denominator, if we were to plug in h equals 0, there's not going to be any division by 0. And therefore, uh, this we're now ready to evaluate the limit at 0 there. So in doing so, we're going to get in the denominator square root of x, square root of x plus 0. We're going to get the square root of x plus the square root of x plus 0. Negative 1 there. So getting rid of the zeros, we're going to get the square root of x times the square root of x times the square root of x plus the square root of x. Negative 1 right there. Um, for which case, if we get a, if we get square root of x times square root of x, that's equal to a x right there. So negative 1 over x. If you take the square root of x plus the square root of x, you're going to get 2 times the square root of x. And this turns out to be our derivative. We're going to end up with negative 1 over 2 times x square root of x. And that is the derivative of 1 over the square root of x, calculated by using the definition of the derivative. By all means, if you know things like the power rule or the quotient rule or something, um, you might have also written the answer as negative 1 over uh, 2 times x to the 3 halves. That's appropriate. Or you could have done something like negative one half times x to the negative three halves. Those are all equivalent in form. And so if we were to check your answer using the power rule, assuming you know the power rule, you'd verify this is the correct derivative. But for any credit on this question, the, the derivative must be calculated using the definition of the derivative, which means that we need to start off at this process right here. We need to know this. In particular, we're not just simplifying a difference quotient. It's a limit of a difference quotient. If there's no reference that you're taking the limit of a difference quotient, if you never use the words limit anywhere, then you won't get full credit on this. So use proper limit notation as you're computing this one.